Georgiana Spencer was born in Althorpe, outside Northampton, on June 7, 1757. She was the eldest daughter of John Spencer, the first Earl Spencer, and Margaret Georgiana Poins. Georgiana was a precocious and loving child who had a very close relationship to her mother. She was less close to her father because she was afraid of his sudden bad moods, although he was not really violent. The Spencer House regularly held performances and concerts, and Georgiana grew up in an extraordinarily fashionable environment of writers, politicians and artists. Along with her younger brother, George John, the later second Earl Spencer, and her sister Harriet Frances, she enjoyed a good education. Lord and Lady Spencer travelled extensively, and sometimes Georgiana, George and Harriet were allowed to go with them. Georgiana's parents also played many gambling games until the early hours. It is possible the gambling addiction of her parents contributed to the later gambling addiction Georgiana developed herself. Georgiana met William Cavendish, the fifth Duke of Devonshire, for the first time in 1772. Despite his shy appearance, Devonshire was considered to be an attractive man. In the spring of 1774, it was decided Georgiana was a good match for the Duke. The Spencers were almost equal to the Cavendishes on a social level, Georgiana had a large dowry, she seemed to be popular and, most importantly, she was young and pliable. Georgiana barely knew William, but since it was in her nature to please her parents, she was delighted when she heard he wanted to marry her. On June 7, 1774, Georgiana married William Cavendish. But after only three months of marriage, Georgiana realized that the Duke had no feelings for her. He did not act unkind to her, but was mostly very distant. The couple had little in common. Georgiana wrote to her mother that she was trying her best to be more attractive to her husband. Georgiana's mother suggested that Georgiana should abandon any sense of independence and show her subordination to her husband by doing whatever he wanted. Not wanting to disappoint her mother, Georgiana did her best to send her mother cheerful letters about her life. Georgiana entered the marriage with the thought of having a loving relationship, but she soon found out that her job was to bear children and fulfill social obligations. The Duke was accustomed to his life as a bachelor, he already received love from his mistress and companionship from his friends. From his wife he expected loyalty, support and mostly an heir. Devonshire did not know how to be romantic, having never known tenderness himself, he did not know how to give love to Georgiana. He did not want to hurt her, but there was a nine-year age difference and both partners had different expectations of marriage. After six years of marriage, William's mistress died. Devonshire took his bastard daughter, Charlotte Williams, into his home and had Georgiana raise her. Georgiana, who had no children of her own, was delighted about the little girl's arrival and soon loved her dearly. Georgiana enjoyed spending the spring months in London because she could meet acquaintances there. She also warmly accepted invitations from strangers, so she was not left alone in Devonshire House, as her husband had his own pursuits. At social gatherings and parties, she impressed with her appearance. But there was also a downside to Georgiana's social life. She became a heavy drinker and started gambling. Georgiana's behavior drew a lot of attention to her and soon Georgiana had become a celebrity. Newspapers sold better when a drawing of Georgiana was printed in them. In the years that followed, Georgiana's lack of maturity pulled her into a life of alcohol abuse and compulsive gambling. Her marriage was not what she expected from it, and fashion no longer brought her satisfaction either. Yet newspapers kept reporting on her as soon as she expressed, did or wore something new. During the summer of 1782, Georgiana visited Bath with her husband, ostensibly to improve her fertility. 
There, Georgiana became acquainted with Lady Elizabeth Foster. Elizabeth's appearance was nothing like Georgiana's. She was small, thin and had dark hair. Although Elizabeth was from the same age as Georgiana, she already had two sons. In 1776, she had married John Thomas Foster, but in 1780, while Elizabeth was pregnant with her second child, the marriage ended. Elizabeth's husband, as usual in the 18th century, was entitled to the children. In addition, he insisted that Elizabeth receive no money from him. It is possible that Elizabeth was treated this way by her husband because she committed adultery. However, this has never been confirmed. Both Georgiana and her husband William felt sorry for Elizabeth and wanted to support her. As a close friendship formed, Elizabeth came to realize that not only Georgiana, but also William, was lonely. He had no female companionship since the death of his mistress Charlotte. Georgiana had become too entangled in her own life to take the mistress's place. Elizabeth saw that they could both use a confidant, a role that she was happy to play, though they were two different parts. With the Duke she was submissive and flirtatious, with Georgiana she was passionate and sensitive. Although letters suggest that Georgiana knew about an affair between her husband and Elizabeth, the two women remained extremely fond of one another. On July 12, 1783, Georgiana gave birth to her first daughter, also named Georgiana. In 1785, a second daughter, Harriet, was born. William Cavendish grew increasingly unhappy with his marriage to Georgiana. He required two things from her. She should not gamble away the family fortune, and she should give birth to a male heir. In the eyes of Cavendish, Georgiana seemed incapable of fulfilling either of these requirements. Yet Cavendish did not want to go through with the divorce. He enjoyed watching Georgiana and Elizabeth vie for his attention. In 1787, the affection-deprived Georgiana fell in love with the young politician Charles Gray. He was 23, she nearly 31. In late September 1789, Georgiana found out she was pregnant. Everyone hoped it would be a boy. William was hoping for his long-awaited heir, Georgiana was hoping for freedom from her marriage, and Elizabeth was hoping to spend more time with William when Georgiana would have finally done her marital duty. On the night of September 2nd, 1790, Georgiana finally gave birth to a son named William. Georgiana, however, was still very much in love with Gray and became pregnant by him. Cavendish was furious and sent Georgiana abroad to give birth. Furthermore, he presented Georgiana with a choice. Either she kept the baby but divorced William and never saw her children again, or she broke off the relationship with Gray and gave the baby up for adoption. She chose the second option. Georgiana was sent abroad and on February 20, 1791, she gave birth to a daughter named Eliza Courtney. Immediately after her birth, Eliza was sent to Charles Gray's parents to be raised by them. Georgiana assumed her husband would be less angry after the birth, but nothing could be further from the truth. Cavendish denied her permission to return to England. After two years, Cavendish finally recalled her, but upon her return, Georgiana found her children were estranged from her. Her son in particular did not recognize his mother and cried every time he was touched by her, and her eldest daughter had developed a complete lack of self-confidence. Georgiana stuck to her resolve to make her husband's wishes a priority, ignoring Gray's proposal to resume their relationship although she still loved him. The affair between William and Elizabeth, on the other hand, continued. In 1795, Georgiana learned from a newspaper that Gray had become engaged to Mary Ponsonby. She was greatly saddened and received support from Elizabeth. Slowly, Georgiana's health started to deteriorate and changes to her character were noticeable. She no longer smiled, she had lost too much weight, and she looked much older than her actual age. 
The once outgoing Duchess had become introverted and started to lead a reclusive life. In 1803, Georgiana suffered from kidney stones. Because of the severe pain, she was prescribed painkillers, to which she remained addicted for a while, after her illness. In March 1806, Georgiana was stricken with jaundice. On March 26, Georgiana had an attack that lasted eight and a half hours. The doctors did not know what to do. Afterwards, it turned out there was nothing they could have done as she had developed an abscess on her liver. On March 30, 1806, at 3.30 in the morning, Georgiana Cavendish died at the age of 48. She was buried in the family vault at the Derby Cathedral. Thank you for watching.